I wonder what Tucker, Tucker Carlson did over the Thanksgiving vacation. Well, uh, let's ask him. Tucker, what'd you do? I just drank Bud Light, waiting for that yeah. special gold. <laughs> 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 no, I drank Buckler. No, I went fishing in Florida, as always. Come oh, on. Fantastic. Buckler is a great non-alcoholic beer, yes, isn't it? Yes, it is. That's my favorite one. I totally one. agree. Take, Take that, O'Doul's. Okay, you know they they might be actually drinking over at uh, Trump headquarters because uh, you know Jill Stein has thrown an IED into the whole uh, party over there with this recount request. Do yes. you really think she thinks? The Russians rigged the election. Well, that's. Uh, thank you for saying that because that's what it's really about. And most yeah. stories covering this don't mention that. The underlying impetus for this recount is the idea that the voting machines, the electronic voting machines, were somehow rigged or controlled by someone outside the government, most totally. likely the Russians. Yeah. There, that's a pretty big allegation. Now, yeah. I don't dismiss anything. I don't, there's no evidence of that. But I mean, I'm open minded. I want to see the evidence. I, this recount doesn't bother me, actually. I don't think it's likely to change the outcome. And if there's a suggestion that that happened, let's find out. Trump, meanwhile, is also making, as you know, a suggestion that the election was rigged, saying that two to three million people voted illegally. That's also being dismissed as a crackpot theory. And maybe it is. There's no evidence for that either. But both of these together add up to something pretty significant, which is people don't believe in the veracity of the election results on either side. And mm -hmm. that is a massive problem. I really think there needs to be some kind of investigation into the results, not to overturn them, but to reassure the rest of us that right. you know, the system works. No, Tucker, there's no way this recount does nothing but put more doubt, more grist in the mill, more Yeah, you more may be right. It just does nothing but hurt the president-elect. And for Jill Stein to get traction when she didn't matter all for the last 18 months is unbelievable to me. I, I think the purpose of this, on, on the, from the perspective of Jill Stein, is not to make certain that the system is one of integrity. I absolutely agree with that. And the effect might be to delegitimize in the minds of some on the left Donald Trump, but he's already delegitimized in their view anyway. I just think we need to take three steps back and actually make certain that the average person believes in the sanctity of the system. And here's how you do that. By making sure that only people who are eligible to vote do so. Do you know how many states require, for example, proof of citizenship mm -hmm. before voting out of 50? Zero. Only one Kansas tried, and in September that requirement was overturned by federal right. judges. So look, there are over 10 million people here illegally. There's obviously a massive incentive on the part of the left for them to vote. Why do we have a system yeah. where they can vote? You know, uh, we have got over 10 states issue driver's licences to illegal aliens. Sure. Yeah, so, like, good there is the capacity for fraud. You know, I, you know, Tucker, you brought something up, and it just reminded me. If they're, you know, let's say the Russians did hack into the Wisconsin voting machines. Would you have the Wisconsin Secretary of State do it, or would you have the NSA do it? I mean, maybe they're calling the wrong people to look into well, that's, whether or not. Well, that's exactly right. I mean, look, this is a major allegation that a foreign power somehow by remote controlled American voting machines. By the way, if there's any proof at all, any suggestion that that's actually true, that's a five alarm fire in the center of our democracy. Yeah. I mean, we really need to get on that. It's a pretty outrageous thing to say if you don't have proof to which allege or even imply, they which they absolutely proof. don't. But I mean, shouldn't somebody say, okay, let's take a sober look? not necessarily recount the votes, but at the voting machines. Like, right. what are you saying? And press the people well, who are pushing this to be specific. Like, what exactly are you saying? Yeah, no exactly. Doing that. There should be more proof. Let's talk about the transition team, because Kellyanne Conway was on the, on the and Newt Gingrich on the Sunday shows talking about how <laughs> they're not for Mitt, uh, Mitt Romney. But if Trump chooses Mitt Romney, my thought was she's, a, she's risking a lot, because what if he chooses Mitt Romney? What does that right. mean for her? Well, she's obviously, and this is just my view, I think she's a very brave person to say that. She clearly yeah, means me it. Yeah, I agree. Um, and, and if this is the new era we're living in, now everyone in Washington is scoffing, how dare she speak out of turn and without permission? But my view is how refreshing it is to see someone say what she really thinks on television for once. Mm -hmm. I mean, she's making a real case, and it's two, it's two parts. The first is, if Mitt Romney was, you know, had a lot of support among Republican voters, he probably would have been the nominee. He doesn't, and therefore he wasn't. And so there are a lot of Trump voters who don't want to see this happen. And second, maybe more significantly, does Mitt Romney agree with Donald Trump's foreign policy positions? That's kind of a basic question. And I think right. the answer is probably no. It, so for her to say this, I mean, I, I thought it was great. It's funny you say what, what the reaction is from folks in Washington, the establishment, because everywhere else, like in the South and in the flyover states, they're all applauding Kellyanne for saying that yeah. because they're mad at him for what he said and he didn't support Donald Trump over the last year. Should he apologize? But also, how, not, how nice is it? Oh, should Romney apologize? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. You'd, you'd have to think there would be some kind of 
you know, reckoning or reconciliation between the two of them. If you say a guy is too immoral to be the president of the United States, and then you say I'm going to serve in his cabinet, I mean, you know, there's got to be there's got to be a transition from one to the other. Right. But I just think, you know, Kellyanne Fitzpatrick saying what she thinks. Right. I mean, in D.C., a scandal is you know is something that we didn't expect to happen, I guess. Right. But I hope we see more of this. And I hope I meet Kellyanne Fitzpatrick. Yeah, is that I her maiden name? Conway. I feel so <laughs> bad. I'm name? so sorry. I'm so sorry. I've known her for so yeah. long. All her the name Irish was Kellyanne Fitzpatrick. The same. Okay, please. Heather said that's her maiden name. Yeah. 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 All right. So <laughs> you know before. I hey, beg your pardon. Right. So the other thing is, uh, the word is that uh, Donald Trump is not happy that Kellyanne Conway did this. So it's uh, we're wondering if they're boxing him in and doing it. And personally, I don't think there's anything wrong with Mitt Romney. It's just that Mitt Romney came out and went against Donald Trump. So right. you have to think it's going to take a couple of years for him to convince people in a few interviews that he's not. And when there's a transition, maybe that'll be a good time for Romney if there's an opening that he likes to go forward. But just the last time we heard him talk, he was begging us not to vote for Donald Trump. Meanwhile, and, and again, on moral grounds, yeah. you know, he's like disgusting. You can't vote for him. Yeah. All right, let's uh, let's talk if we can about sanctuary cities. Among the many things that uh, that Donald Trump says he's going to do is he's going to stop it and deny federal funding for those cities that do it. Where right. is that in the things to do list? If Tucker Carlson handed uh, Donald Trump a things to do list. Well, I mean, I think it's it's maybe number one or two. I mean, what's so remarkable to me as someone who's you know been paying attention for the last 20 years is for for generations, liberals have said the states do not have a right to ignore federal law. That was the lesson of the civil rights era. That's why Orville Faubus was wrong and President Eisenhower was right. The state of Arkansas said we're just not doing that, and the Fed said no, you must because it's federal law. And liberals and and me too have said yes, that's exactly right. And now they're saying, you know what, if there's a federal law that we disagree with, we're just going to ignore it, and there's nothing you can do about it. I mean, right. the two cannot coexist. And so as a theoretical, as a matter of principle, I think it really matters, but also as a practical matter, you can't have cities where people who are totally uh, you know, unknown, their origin <laughs> is unknown, are floating around and, and living. It's a threat to national security. And we know this from the 9-11 report. We know that I think it was six out of the 19 hijackers had violated immigration law. And one of the key recommendations of that report was you've got to kind of know who's living in your country or else sure. there are potentially really bad consequences. That's common <clears throat> sense. And so right. these mayors, for political reasons, are ignoring that. And I, and I think that cannot stand. Not just mayors, it's governors down in Texas. Uh, Greg Abbott right. was responding to a tweet. A guy said, hey, uh, the city of Austin just uh, reinforced that they will forever be a sanctuary city. And then he came back and he said, yes, I'm going, uh, is there anything you can do to reverse it? And the governor said, yes, I'm going to sign a law that bans sanctuary cities. Also, I've already issued an order cutting funding to sanctuary cities. That's really what Donald Trump can do as commander in chief. Uh, he can cut off the funding just like that. Well, it's a little much to say to the federal government, look, we don't, we're not going to obey your laws. We, you know, we reject your laws, man, but we still want the subsidy. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know what I mean? It's like a little like one of your teenage kids saying, I'm not going to obey anything you say, and up yours, I'm giving you the finger, but you still have to, you know, pay me, you know, 500 bucks a month <laughs> and my tuition. I mean, like, you can't have both, sort of, right? All right. Tucker Carlson, it was a great, uh, great start to your show at 7 o'clock, and this week, somewhat controversial. You're going to do a best of Tucker Carlson, looking back at the week that was. It's early, all, yes. Uh, all week. <laughs> Uh, that's I'm also decision. doing an autobiography. <laughs> <laughs> Tucker, congratulations on the success. Thanks, guys. Everyone's it's great to see you. We're all happy and for especially you. you, Ainsley. Thank you. Uh, I love uh, you. It's favorite. Thank you. It's <laughs> as usual.